Hey guys, it's Trevor Sullivan coming to you with another PowerShell video today. And the topic of today's video, the goal is to discuss and understand how PowerShell profile scripts work. So first of all, we need to discuss what is a profile script. So typically in a shell environment like Bash or in this case PowerShell, you will have the option to hook into the startup event of a PowerShell session and define some custom variables or custom functions or perform some kind of customizations to your shell environment when you start up your shell. So this provides the ability to provide you know, interactive uh, commands that you can execute that may not be part of a module that you've installed separately. Uh, you can define, you know, environmental secrets that you need, like API keys, for example, in order to access remote APIs or things of that nature. So it's basically just a convenience helper that enables you to, to provide environmental customizations. Um, so we'll just kind of leave it at that. Now, PowerShell provides a few different locations on the file system where you can define a profile script. And the way that you can discover those is by looking at the built-in variable called profile. Now, if you just hit F8 here on, on line number one and just emit the profile variable, by default, you're only going to get a single file system path, which is specific to your user profile. So if a different user logs into the same system, this will not apply to their profile. And the other thing that you'll notice is that it's specific to the Microsoft.vs code uh, PowerShell host. So PowerShell, as many of you probably know, is just an engine and different applications that are built in .NET are able to host the PowerShell engine in process. And so that is what the Microsoft uh, PowerShell extension for Visual Studio Code is doing in this case. So this script path that we have here is only going to affect my user and it's only going to affect VS Code. However, there are some other hooks that are available in addition to that. And to uh, kind of unlock those additional file system paths, you can take a look at, uh, if you pipe the profile object into select object, property star, I'll hit F8 there again. And what you'll notice is there's actually some additional properties that are kind of a little bit hidden by default, but they are actually available on this profile variable. And so you've got profile dot all users, all hosts, all users, current host, current user, all hosts, etc. And so this gives you the ability to affect all users for any application that's hosting PowerShell on a given system or affect all users, but only for a specific PowerShell process like VS Code in this case or you can affect just the current user for any PowerShell process, like the PowerShell console host or VS Code or you know Visual Studio for Windows and that kind of thing, or you can just affect the current user for the current host. So depending on which scope you want to customize on the system, you can uh, you know modify a different file here. So what I'll do in this case is just modify so I'm, I'm going to do code to invoke a Visual Studio code. So co code is basically the command line tool that you would use to invoke a Visual Studio code session. And then after that, you can specify a file path. So I can actually reference the profile dot current user all hosts, which is going to affect this file here under my user profile, uh, Windows PowerShell profile dot PS1. And so that's going to modify uh, my PowerShell environment for any PowerShell process that I run under my user account. So if I just hit F8 on this line here, it will open up VS Code, or it'll open up my profile script in VS Code. As you can see, I don't have anything specified in my profile at the moment, but something that you could do for, an, for example here is to install a module. So you could say install module, name it scope current user dash force. 
And so basically every time that I launch PowerShell, it's going to attempt to uh, install the latest version of the Name It PowerShell module from the PowerShell gallery. Now, there are some drawbacks to applying too many customizations to your PowerShell profile script. As a best practice, I would generally leave longer running commands like install module that could take several seconds or for larger modules, even maybe up to a minute or two to download and install the module. I would really reserve those commands for um, you know, commands that you run interactively because you have to think about the fact that your profile script is executing every time that you launch the PowerShell uh, process, right? So every time that I launch VS Code, this install module command would be running. And, you know, what happens if I'm on a laptop and I don't have an internet connection? You know, that's going to cause errors to occur, and it just creates kind of a messy situation. It's going to take a long time to run. It's trying to see if there's a network connection. It's going to fail. It's just going to look ugly. So generally, you're going to want to add additional uh, conditional logic here inside of your script. So say if, you know, network connection is available or something like that. You know, you could use something like WMI to detect a network connection or a really quick ping command to test a network connection, something along those lines. You know, you could you could basically set some conditional logic to only run this particular command if a network connection is present. Um, you know, that that's kind of outside the scope of this particular video, but just be aware that it would probably be a good practice to um, you know, really be thinking about the customizations that you're adding to your profile. Now, things like setting environment variables, like um, maybe a DB password or something like that, uh, generally not a good idea to store these things in plain text, but if you're just developing against a local dev environment that's only accessible to you locally and it's not listening on, you know, uh, external interfaces like it's only it's only listening on the local host interface you know that would be that would be a good place to potentially put a database password or something like that that doesn't contain sensitive data um, so you know setting an environment variable is going to be very fast it's not really going to impact your startup times in any significant fashion so that's a pretty benign thing to add to your PowerShell profile. Uh, the other just general guidance that I would add around PowerShell profiles is that you should keep them relatively short. Uh, and the reason I say that is because you want to minimize the ability for somebody to say, oh, well, you know, this works on my machine, but when I try to run it on your machine, it doesn't work. And then you go back and you're like, oh, well, I have all these customizations inside my profile script. And honestly, most of the time, those customizations probably are better put inside of an application repository uh, that it's relevant to, rather than having it be specific just to your computer. Uh, the other thing that I would point out as well is that because a profile script is inherently scoped to your local machine, uh, you know, if you're if you're running multiple different systems and you need to keep configurations in sync, then a profile script is probably not the best place to do that unless you are calling a script that is synchronized using an external service like you know Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that, you could potentially keep a private configuration script that you then uh, can invoke using the ampersand or dot call operators in PowerShell to call, you know, C Dropbox myscript.ps1 or something like that. So uh, just keep those things in mind, but I did just want to really quickly show you profile scripts and how they work and uh, call out some of the best practices around them. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what other kind of video content you would like to see. We'll see you in the next time. Cheers.